Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law. If you can believe that, this is my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. Welcome. We are gathered here tonight to talk Seeking Sister Wife. We are on season five. We are on episode eight entitled Seeking uh, the Unexpected. The Unexpected. Yeah. Which apparently is a baby. Girl, and you were right. Well, I You're mean. You're fake psychic and Reddit sleuthing. Well, I mean, it was, I saw it on a YouTube and video. And you saw it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily my psychic vibes. Still. But yeah, we had a pregnancy announcement. Very interesting. <sighs> Unfortunately. Yeah, we're going to get into that. <laughs> yeah. Before we do, we just have to tell you to please do not forget to hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast we say a lot of bad words you were telling me somebody commented last time and said (laughs) wow you two are vulgar y'all are vulgar duh hello are you new here yeah that's Uh. what we do (laughs) so if you're sensitive and if you don't like opinions that are counter to your own sometimes then you might want to find yourself another dumpster baby yeah but if you're down and you're ready to have a convo about some polygamists Welcome to this dumpster. Yeah, welcome. And if you are down and ready to party with us, fat raccoons, wow, go and join us on Instagram. Unnecessary. <laughs> At Reality TV Cringe. And join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash reality TV Cringe. We have so much bonus content up so on much. there. And if you think we're vulgar here, oh, we're God. way worse on Patreon. Yeah, we have no chill. None. Patreon is also the very best way to support us if you like yeah. the work that we are doing. We are putting out a lot of content. The question is, are you enjoying it? Yeah. Now, if you are watching on YouTube, please don't forget to comment and to like and to share and subscribe because everything you do helps us in the algorithm. I think we picked up like 200 subscribers in the last week. I feel really good about it. Me too. I feel really special. I know. We're famous. So thank you for all you do, YouTube. Thank you. All right. So before we get into the episode, any thematic thoughts, any takeaways? Well... (laughs) <laughs> I'm disappointed that Danielle is staying with Garrick because she had a baby. Like she announced it on an Instagram live last night because she does a live every week after every episode. Yeah. And so they showed their baby and their baby is very cute. The yeah. baby girl. She's a little peanut. Oh my she's got God. a little head. She's so, so cute. cute. I love that she's in the world. She's not the problem. Garrick's the problem. Yeah. And I'm just mad that. He's her dad. <laughs> and they brought a child into a problem, to like, an existing why? long-standing problem. Like, why would you do that? Why? It's the worst. So that's my major takeaway. Yeah. My takeaway is that Justin's weird as fuck. Uh-huh. And that very awkward kiss at the end of his date with Yari, Ooh. I'm like, is are we watching an essay? Yeah. <laughs> are we watching something terrible and criminal, perhaps? Like, it was really weird very uncomfortable he's like can i have a kiss and she's like no and he's like well let me kiss you anyway i know what a creepy old man very much so they're very strange well let's start with them because they were the top of the episode anyway let's get their creepiness out of the way so justin and becky are gonna go on a date or no justin's gonna go on a date with yari but you would think that becky was going too with the amount of like meddling and controlling and management that she's doing over justin like make sure you pull out her chair make sure your hair is done i'm like okay calm down what a weirdo well and it seems like it's the second date like he went on a first date with her and this is the second date to like answer more questions about her but before we do that we got to go get justin a haircut by some weird barber <laughs> who's who happens to be coincidentally also a polygamist <laughs> or somebody who practices polyamory. Polyamory. It's, he's not a polygamist. Yeah, I, that's what I thought right. too. But he told them he was a polygamist, and so that way Becky felt more comfortable. But Becky sitting there behind Justin, being like, "You missed a spot." I know. Like, let him finish the cut, and then maybe ask him to fix something you don't like. Furthermore, why do we need to meet absolute strangers and then <laughs> announce that we are meeting somebody in consideration of adding them as a sister wife? Like, your hairstylist doesn't need to know all that. No, they don't care. We don't all. want to know this much about you, Becky. No. But that's like, I feel like that's part of the trade being a hairstylist, though, because you got to talk to all these people and all these people got to dump all their problems to these poor hairstylists. Like, I don't know how they deal with it, honestly. But they're getting or Justin's getting his haircut to look all handsome 
I guess. Well, at the end Yari. of the haircut, it looked like the beginning of the haircut. <laughs> I'm like, did you do anything? He's only got four or five hairs that they just move around and approximate a new style. But I'm like, you look like the exact same guy. I know. He like shaved a little bit off the side and right. that was it. But I'm like, you're still balding. You still got no hair. Whatever. He gets his haircut. Then they go home and then he's got to get dressed for his date with Yari. And I guess they met her on some dating app, probably Tinder, because mm-hmm. they couldn't find like a normal polygamous dating app or something. So let's stop right there. Okay. Now, is there anything about that that seems deceptive to you? Because I feel like there were some mixed messages here. Like they say that they put the fact that they were a polygamist couple like at the bottom of the profile. Uh And they're like, Yari didn't read the profile. But then we have Justin also saying to the camera, like, I didn't tell Yari about being a polygamist until the end of our first date, kind of giving me the vibe like, did you even put it in your dating profile that you guys are polygamous? Are you just springing this on unsuspecting and innocent women? I feel like they're springing it on people, especially on like the dating apps and stuff, or they're not like, blatantly advertising it because if you're putting it at the end of your dating profile nobody's reading your whole profile anyway no (laughs) no especially if you're on like tinder or fucking bumble or whatever like people are just looking to fuck um i read my husband's whole profile on plenty plenty of of fish fish. i did that with your daughter on okay yes i was stupid i was looking at every (laughs) single word i was looking at every single (laughs) picture but I guess people don't look nowadays. They're just looking no. to hook up. Well, and you weren't looking just to fuck. No. You were looking for a man. Yeah. A husband. Uh-huh. And he, <laughs> I feel like Justin's just looking to fuck. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And like, let's talk about this too. So they're talking about how they met her or he met her on Tinder or whatever. He's like, yeah, I was like immediately attracted to her because, you know, I'm into Arabic Latino woman, women. Right. I'm like, that's oddly specific. That seems very um, fetishizing to me. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. When she's asking him during their date whether this is a situation between me and you, Justin, or is it me, you, and your wife, it feels to me like what Yari is asking is like, are you expecting me to fuck your wife too? Yeah. Or is this just me and you? And Justin was kind of ambiguous here. He's just like, you know, yeah, like, depends on what you want. And we could all go out on a date. But I'm like, is there like some subtext here that they're not saying? Oh, yeah. I think they're totally swingers. I've been saying it all season. I'm like, they're either swingers or they're both poly. They like to fuck a bunch of people. And that's fine. Just be honest about it. You don't have to be like, oh, it's religion. God told me my husband needs to fuck other women. I don't know. It's very weird. He was kind of skirting around it. But also maybe he's just dumb. And maybe he thought Yari was talking about dates. Like, is this how it's going to be with dates? When she was probably meaning, am I going to have to fuck your weird wife? Yeah, though? like the romantic connections in this relationship. Like, are you expecting me to also have a romantic connection? with? That's what I was hearing. Yeah. And that's not what he was answering. And then there's this other glaring thing, this elephant in the room concerning polygamy. Because to me, and maybe I'm just being a boomer out here, but polygamy boomer. for me has a spiritual connotation. Like there is a reason people are polygamous. It usually Correct. has to do with we're Mormon. It usually has to do with our celestial kingdom and yeah. what kind of planet we're going to rock in the afterlife and how Pull many bitches going to be on our planet. Yeah. Um, but there is a spiritual connotation, and I guess in Islam as well. And in Christianity, I know Solomon had many concubines and there were some people who had multiple wives in the Bible. But like Justin and Becky, who come from an apocalyptic cult, mm-hmm. the Tony Alamo apocalyptic cult, they don't talk about the spiritual part of it. No. Because I don't think they actually believe in a spiritual part of it. I think it's like a sex thing for them both. And they're just saying it's spiritual to make them seem like they're wholesome people that are not creepy stalker weirdos that stalk these girls that they date. I don't know. It just so it seemed very weird. And like the way Justin was describing Yari and his talking head, like, oh, my God, she's so hot. I'm so into her. I'm so attracted okay. to her. Like, you're fucking weird, dude. You're gross. You have no um charisma or 
riz as the kids <laughs> say these days. He's got none. Like, but what is the difference to these couples between polygamy and polyamory? Like, does is polygamy polygamy because of the spiritual component or is, is it because it's the marital component? Because with polygamy, it's like we're entering into a union that's higher than just fucking yeah. and being open. I don't really know. That's my question. Is the spiritual part that's lacking that I want somebody to bring up and talk about? Well, and I wonder if it's just because this is the premise of the show. It's called Seeking Sister Wife. So they have to frame it as all polygamous relationships when like seeking brother husbands we found out all of these couples were poly so mm -hmm. i kind of wonder if that's what's going on with seeking sister wife it's just more entertaining because these couples are weirder than seeking brother husband i think that's probably what it is okay i'm just i'm just wondering what's going on because to me they kind of came in with a bit of a spiritual vibe mm -hmm. and you would think that they would be talking about that a bit more with these women that they're trying to date and bring into the whole family structure. Like these are my these are my spiritual intentions. These yeah. are my emotional intentions. These are my physical intentions. But no, it's just like, do you work out? <laughs> do you like my hair? I think you're. Can attractive. I kiss you? Ugh. Ew, gross. Yikes! Because Justin just wants to fuck, just like Garrick Merrifield, <laughs> and just like Becky just wants to fuck mm -hmm. honey, and just like Danielle just wants to fuck totally. Dude. They out here just wanted to. They fuck. just want everybody just want to fuck. So yeah, that date was fucking awkward as hell. They're going to go on a third one, maybe. But Yari doesn't seem interested in it at no. all. He's coming in for the kiss and she's literally bowing her head, <laughs> moving her head. She's skeeved out like the rest of us. She's like, she's never going to see him again, I hope. Nope. Uh uh. Have you ever done that before? I've totally done that yes. before on a date where I'm like, mm, no. Yeah. Here's the cheek. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Disgusting. So next we have the Sherwoods. Ashley and Shane. So a couple things happened here. First, we started with Shane and his friend. I think his name was Charlie or something. I don't know. I don't Who care. Who I really liked. He was totally based. A very good friend. Very good friend. Very supportive. They're going to a bar or something, playing pool. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But the whole point of this interaction was <clears throat> Shane kind of off-gassing his feelings about Ashley dating other women and how he feels awkward with it because he's never seen Ashley with another woman until he saw her with Sarah. He doesn't feel good about it. He's got bad vibes about Sarah. So what did you think about this whole situation? I thought that was really telling because at least in terms of what we saw as the audience, Ashley wasn't tripping over herself with Sarah. Mm -hmm. She was very nice. You know, they were having a nice little time together, but it's not like she was out here tonguing Sarah down. So if that little bit of affection and attention from Ashley to Sarah is already making him feel bad, mm -hmm. it's making me really question why he's doing this in the first place. But then we get to the part where we learn that he is actually got a different motivation, which is the fact that he has cancer. He's got kidney cancer. Yes, which we kind of speculated on right. a couple episodes ago because you had heard him say that he had like some health issues right. or whatever. It's kind of a throwaway line. I'm like, wait a minute, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. And you were right. He's got cancer. So he's got renal carcinoma probably is what it is. He says it's renal cancer. <clears throat> and he's pretty young mm -hmm. to be having it because normally I work in oncology. So I know I can speak. From my expertise. Wow. Because I'm so smart. It's a medical <laughs> professional in the building. <laughs> no. But renal carcinoma is like one of those cancers that usually older people get. Mm. So he's kind of young to have it, but he had a partial nephrectomy, which he got a partial kidney removal. And then he's got some spots on his other kidney that he probably has to get removed. And then Shane and Ashley did like a Reddit AMA mm -hmm. um, where they were answering people's questions and he clarified... That he's getting another surgery. Yes. I think in the near future. Like in the next couple of weeks. And he also said, unfortunately, which makes one speculate whether there's a recurrence mm -hmm. or whether there's an additional situation that he's going to need to take care of here. Yeah. But it's really sad. Yeah. And when he's opening up to his friend, it brings him to tears. And I thought his friend was really awesome in the moment. He's just like, if you ever need to just vent, if you ever just want to call somebody... I'm here no matter what I'm going to be here and with people who are chronically ill and people who are sick that's a real problem just like the people who fade away from your life mm -hmm. so having people there who are like I'm going to be here no matter what I think is really really important yeah but I have to ask you like it's really weird to me I've been on the planet now this is my sixth decade right I'm in my 50s can you believe that yeah it's crazy it's pretty wild yeah but the cancer that I'm hearing in my earball in families, friends, and communities, like the instances of people contracting cancer, 
is wow to me mm -hmm. lately. Like oh, in yeah. the last five to 10 years, like so many people are getting it. I'm not going to turn this into a con uh, no. conspiracy. That's yeah. not what I'm trying to do, but it's like really sad. And yeah. my own doctor's like, yeah, like the one diagnosis I hear in my office every single month several times a month is like breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Like you got to get your mammograms. Oh yeah. Delia. And I'm just like, really? I don't want to. She's like, you got to go get your mammograms. You got to. But it's just like, yeah, it's, it seems really wild. And we're seeing so many young people yeah. with this problem. And so I felt for Shane in me this too. moment and it made so much make sense to me because we're wondering like, why are you doing this? If you're clearly so uncomfortable with the fact that She's attracted to another woman. Well, yeah. That's why. Now why? And on their Reddit M AMA, they clarified that they had been looking for s sister wives for years prior to his mm -hmm. cancer diagnosis. And then once he got diagnosed, it kind of accelerated. Yeah. yeah. So which I think is weird, personally. So let's talk about that. Because I know you were saying like you had a problem with their intention behind this. Yeah, because... I'm sure they probably were talking about having a sister wife years prior or whatever. I'm sure it was talked about. They had many conversations. They were thinking about maybe pursuing this lifestyle, but maybe didn't want to like jump head in head first mm -hmm. into it. I get that. But for him to be diagnosed with cancer and then that's the reason why they're accelerating it. Like, I don't know. I just feel, I just feel like it's weird because it's mainly for Ashley, right? Like, Shane frames it in this episode like I want to make sure Ashley's taken care of mm -hmm. but I'm like why like I, if what do you to mean me, why like he doesn't well, want to leave her alone they've I, got two little kids and he's going to want her to be with somebody who's going to be supportive I mean I can see what I think the focus is weird I feel like we should be paying attention to you right now Shane I shouldn't be out here like nine months pregnant trying to get some cookie or That's eat what I'm somebody's saying. cookie like we should be paying attention to Shane but at the same time I understand his his desire to make sure that Ashley has something when if and when he goes. I just don't know if it's purely his desire or if that's something that Ashley planted into okay. his head. Because to me, if my spouse was going through cancer, me being taken care of or like having another partner after maybe they die is not a priority to me. Like my priority is my partner who has cancer and like being there for them 100%, mm -hmm. not making them feel uncomfortable by watching me date mm -hmm. other women, knowing full well that that's a trigger for him, that he had a partner in college well, does that she left know him. That? She because, does. Well, she probably knows about his past with his partner in college, but he's telling his friend like, I don't want Ashley to see me weak. I don't want Ashley to see me having all this trouble with the women that she's dating. So like, does she know the full scope of his discomfort? Like, has he given her permission to go forth and do what she wants and his blessing and his encouragement? Because then that's unfair to Ashley. Like she's doing what she thinks her husband wants her to do. I guess. But I don't know if it was driven by her because like at the mm -hmm. beginning of the season, she kind of framed it like it was driven by her. Like, I realized that I was bisexual when I got married to Shane. And so I want to experience this part of me through our marriage. But Shane's not going to fuck other women. He confirmed that in their Reddit AMA. He doesn't get any benefit from this. I just, I don't know. I just think it's kind of weird. I don't understand why the priority is to find a sister wife. I understand Shane's like, well, I want to make sure my wife's taken care of. But I'm like, you're not terminal. It doesn't seem like you're terminal. Renal cell carcinoma has like a 90% success, like survival rate. Like it's not like mm -hmm. one of those ones that's like, you're going to be dead in five <clears throat> years. So right. it's just, it just seems weird to me. Something feels off. I don't understand why we have to get Ashley to eat a box right away. <laughs> right. I don't know. Because when you see Ashley in the conversation that they're having, like at the end of their segment, um, she's sitting on the couch and she's crying. Right. And even in their interstitial, when they're talking, they're doing their talking heads, she's crying, like she's definitely worried. She's definitely concerned. She definitely loves him. So yeah. I just, I don't really know whether he's equally forcing the issue or not. Yeah, maybe he's not. And maybe Ashley is. And that really would be really fucking selfish totally. at a time when he's so concerned about his health. But maybe not. Like he seems to want to make sure she's got a partner if and when he's not there. And uh, although I think that that's like not what Bizarre. they should be thinking about right now i can understand it yeah and have compassion for it i guess yeah and i have compassion for them too and i feel bad for shane that he's like put in this position because how 
does he feel? You know, like just having to be like, okay, well, I've got cancer. So now I've got to think about my wife. It doesn't seem like he feels great. No, not at all. He's breaking down in a bar with his friend (laughs) who's trying to comfort him. Like that's what his wife should be doing. And he should be as comfortable as possible at this time. So the whole thing is pretty sad. It's pretty sad and icky. But like in their Reddit AMA, they were being very like supportive with everybody. And and people were like, oh, I totally understand your guys' situation. And so they were showing them a lot of love and stuff. But I'm just like, I don't know. It just seems <laughs> kind of, it seems kind of weird to me. Yeah. And especially That's knowing fair. Shane's past, I'm like, why, Ashley, is it a priority for you to find a sister wife? You know what I mean? Who knows? Maybe Shane was the one that decided to do this for right. her. I don't know. Seems weird though. Well, your um, issue is registered. Well, thanks. So we understand. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad. And then we have the Merrifields. Uh, <laughs> wow. So we open this episode with Danielle sadly packing a bag because she's uh, <laughs> throwing her dress in the <laughs> suitcase. Oh, uh, it's dramatic. So upset. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> Okay, (laughs) this feels really produced and manufactured to me Mm -hmm. on a couple of levels, but I will let you continue. For sure. So she's packing her bag because she says she's going to fly to Rio to witness the ceremony of Natalia and Garrick. But she says that Garrick and her haven't really spoken in the six weeks that he's been to Brazil, that they needed this separation. And wasn't he supposed to be gone for just four weeks? Yeah, for a month. So he's gone for six weeks. On his he's vacation. He's got two sons, mm-hmm. one who's a teenager, one who's like a tweenager, uh-huh. and a full ass wife, although not legally, and a home and a business. Yeah. And he's tacked on two additional weeks after he left on bad terms with his wife. Yeah. He does not care about you, Danielle. Not at he all. He does not give one shit about you, Danielle. Not at all. Wake up. Wake the fuck up. And I thought in this scene, maybe... We were starting to see that. Of course not. No, of course not. She's on fucking Instagram on her lives talking about how much she loves Garrick and their baby together. And I'm just like. (sighs) So you get what you settle for. I'm not going to feel bad for you. Seriously. You can cry all you want. Cry more. For real. Cope harder. I don't care. If you're not going to do anything to benefit your own situation, much less the situation for your children Mm -hmm. now another child like you can get fucked i do not care about you lady for real i don't feel bad frustrating she's so fucking annoying and so she's packing her bag she's talking about how she's got a bomb to drop because her sister-in-law samantha's coming over to help her and so she's gonna tell her that she's pregnant and the sister-in-law in her talking head is like yeah i'm kind of concerned about danielle and garrick's relationship because i've never seen them like this bad apparently garrick will call the in-laws up and ask to stay at their house when they have fights and shit, mm-hmm. which is weird to me. Yeah, why wouldn't Danielle go to her family? That's because he doesn't have family. Exactly, he's because he's a His own family disowned him and he doesn't have any of his own friends except for that weirdo that went on that bike ride with him. <laughs> yeah. um, but like, he doesn't seem to have like a lot of people around him to support him other than her and her family. Mm -hmm. So he goes to stay with his in-laws when they're fighting. That's weird. Big yikes. Big yikes. And so Samantha's concerned. She goes over there to talk to Danielle. Danielle's like, yeah, I think we really needed this separation because, you know, we needed to get right with God. We need to get right spiritually because we're just having these problems. So it's been good that I haven't seen my husband for six weeks while he's fucking another bimbo in Brazil. No offense to Natalia, but, you know, I mean, that's essentially what he's doing. (laughs) And so Samantha comes over and Danielle's like, yeah, I'm pregnant. And Samantha's face is like the face of all of us viewers at home. Like, what? Bitch, what? So now we have to have the conversation about whether we think Danielle did this on purpose. Mm. Because somebody on the Internet mentioned that she has managed... To not get pregnant for the last, I don't know, 12 years since her last child. So they obviously have a method that works for them. But all of a sudden, when he's falling in love with this young chippy from Brazil, all of a sudden, whatever you've been doing that's been working for the last 12 years isn't working and you fall pregnant. I just feel like it's possible. Of course, it's absolutely possible. But like, is this something that she's doing to sabotage? Garrick and Natalia oh, hmm. to maybe bring Garrick back to her or mm. get his focus 
back on her because I'm just going to give you a news flash. Uh, Danielle is not going to work. No. As we see when you FaceTime him in just a little bit. Like he does not give a shit. No, he doesn't care. No. At all. Then that's what's so crazy is like she finds out she's pregnant because she's feeling all sick and stuff. She hasn't even told her husband yet who's in another country. Banging a woman. Banging another. Who doesn't want to talk to you. Doesn't even talk to her. That's what's so crazy. And she knows that mm-hmm. it's wrong. Like she knows it's wrong that Natalia is not talking to her. She knows that this separation is not good for their marriage. She even says to Samantha, like th- this is where we see the clip that we saw a couple of previews ago that she realizes like, dang, with Garrett gone, I could be a single mom. Like mm-hmm. he could leave my ass and excommunicate to fucking Brazil mm-hmm. and never come back and see us ever again. It's like, right. yeah, you're dumb. You're so dumb. Yeah. Uh, crazy like a fox. Yeah. Do you think that there's a chance that she manipulated this whole thing and got pregnant on purpose before he left? What's the reasoning behind that besides... To bring him back to her. Uh, but he has like no legal obligation though. But I mean, you know, most upstanding men, if they're going to bring a baby into this world, they're going to want to be there to protect and support that baby and that, oh, we're going uncensored. Yeah. To protect and support that baby. They're not just going to skip town. So maybe this is a card that she's trying to play don't you think that's possible? I know Garrick has whole ass kids already with Danielle, but it's like he's in Brazil. Why well, do, they're l- divorced? Let's get back from the uncensored, right? So, right, but I think that's the minority of men. The minority of maybe, maybe I'm just. I know a lot of baby daddies. Okay, that, maybe there's a lot of men out there who don't want to claim their children but mm-hmm. you can see how danielle would think that he would I because guess. they have these two pre-existing children sure. that he has up until this point yeah taken care of so maybe sure. she thinks that this is something she can do to get the focus back on her or maybe she's trying to like save their marriage like i talked about a few mm-hmm. episodes ago that like i feel like a lot of people think that having a baby when you have a horrible marriage will make things better and you're like no it sometimes it amplifies oh the existing problem it always does it always yeah. does mm-hmm. so maybe that would be her motivation like maybe she knows that they're having problems and so then she gets pregnant i don't know it just seems weird. so many people over the um ages yeah. have had babies to save relationships and it just doesn't work but they seem happy um on the internet and maybe it worked because as far as we know I was going to say Roberta, but Natalia (laughs) is no longer with them, right? So something changed and maybe this has something to do with it. Maybe she's sabotaging it, but I'm like, you can't do that forever, girl. No. You can't. We also hear from Danielle that she is not inclined to go to Rio Mm -hmm. to attend the wedding because she feels like a third wheel. She feels like Natalia really doesn't want her there because once again, Natalia is not returning her texts. She's leaving her on red or on scene. Yeah. And she's like, why should I go? Like, I'm just going to feel bad about everything. And I guess this is what leads to her conversation with Garrick. Yeah. So she FaceTimes him and she decides to tell him, yeah, I'm prego and I don't think I want to go to Brazil. He's well, like, but first she says I'm pregnant. Yeah. And then we have this pause. <laughs> okay, because listening. first of all, he's not smart, man. So he's like, oh, I'll make fire. <laughs> I'm taking in the words and processing. So 17 minutes later, he's like, oh, wow. Well, children are a blessing from God. Sure, that's great. Sure. (laughs) So vacant. He literally does not care at all. So strange. Yeah. So bizarro world. Oh, yeah. This guy in his face. Yeah. Well, and both of them looked so unhappy. Like, Danielle looks horrible. Like, she looks miserable. She's not crying. Happy about it. She's crying. He looks dead inside. I mean, he already does. He He's always dead inside and probably mm-hmm. drunk. He just doesn't look happy. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I mean, he probably, probably drunk. He probably is. Sex tired. He's yeah. been banging the entire oh, time. Drunk. Ew. Doesn't have time for you and your pregnancy, Danielle. Oh, disgusting. But, like, I was wondering if she was putting on the waterworks so mm. that she could get some attention some compassion from him but like he gave her dust he gave her absolutely nothing you might as well be invisible bitch this man don't care about you not at all not at all and so then she's like well i feel like a third wheel i don't want to go to brazil and then he's like well but natalia will have her feelings be hurt if you don't oh god forbid Which is like, really, you know that Danielle's telling you over and over again that she feels like Natalia doesn't hate, doesn't like her. And you're saying, 
But Natalia is going to be sad if you don't go. Yeah, but what about Natalia not reaching out to me? Why aren't you over there in Brazil talking about that and brokering a peace between the two sisters in this relationship? That would make too much sense for yeah. Garrick Maryfield. Well, he doesn't care. No, he doesn't care That's why at he doesn't all. do it. Yeah, and then when his wife, who's pregnant... He hasn't seen her in six weeks. Is like, yeah, so I'm just not going to go to Brazil, actually. He doesn't even put up a fight. He's like, okay, well, we're going to probably get married next week. So I'll I'll send you a text or something. Love you. Bye. I'll talk to you in a few days. That's what he says. His wife has just told him that she is pregnant. Pregnante. Yeah. (laughs) Pregnant. (laughs) Pregnant. And you're like, okay, well, and she's crying. Yeah. Let me tell you, if I'm crying in front of my husband, like his entire world disintegrates. I mean, he's like this big 6'3", lumberjack, mohawk, tattooed guy. But if I cry in front of my husband, he does not know what to do with himself. And he will not do anything else until I stop because he wants to take care of me. So if he were to see me on a FaceTime call and I'm crying, much less because I'm pregnant. Are you kidding me? My husband would be like, okay, honey, let's talk about this. I know. Let's spend some time. How can I make you feel better? What do you need? Like, that would be what my husband would do. And I just always just automatically measure other partners against my husband thinking that most people are like him. Yeah. But maybe not. <laughs> no. If Garrick is any indication, like no he way. does not give a shit. He's like, well, I'll call you in a few days. And she's like, okay, tomorrow. Can you call me tomorrow? And he's like, okay, I'll call you tomorrow then. I guess. Baby. <laughs> fucking whiner. I know. I was actually thinking about your husband watching this. I'm like, he would never. No, like, the no um, good man would or woman. No, not at all. Even my part, my partner would be like dropping everything. Of course. But we wouldn't go six weeks without seeing each other either. No. I think that's fucking weird personally. But they're obviously having problems. Their marriage is miserable. And then on their freaking Instagram live, they're putting on this show like, look, we're a happy family. Look at our beautiful baby who is very beautiful. But I'm like, great. She gets to grow up. With mm-hmm. a dysfunctional family. With, with a fucked up dad. Fucked up dad and a fucked up mom mm-hmm. who allows him to treat her that way. And so now this girl gets to see this and then is going to choose partners that resemble her shit ass father. Well, Great. somebody brought that up to her on Instagram. I saw it on Reddit. Like, Did well, they? are you going to be okay if your daughter grows up to have a husband like Garrick who's out here banging all these women? And she's like, well, if that's her choice, I would 100% support it. Oh my God. Ghislaine so Maxwell. Dumb. Ghislaine Maxwell. Evil. Sex trafficking terrible. bullshit. God. The criminality, the spiritual and the energetic criminality of it all. You people are degenerates. <laughs> they are. Fucking deplorable for degenerates. Real. <laughs> for real. And I thank you, TLC, for putting them on my TV. I mean, I love to Because watch it, it gives me life. Yes. And also like that we get to commiserate and we get to talk about it yeah. and call out the bullshit. Because totally. I wonder how many women are out here with men who aren't like polygamists, but who are like fucking around on them and they're putting up with it because they think they can't do anything else. Well... Danielle, you own part of that business. You own part of that house. That's your family there to support you. You don't need Garrick. No, not at all. You could get so many other men or women or whatever you want. Yeah. Instead of Garrick and his wife beaters. And um, note to Danielle, he's not hearing from God. He's hearing from a demon. Totes. He's hearing from a devil. His dick. Yeah, and it's his dick. Like Garrick is using scriptures that he reads in the Bible to justify his deviant yes. behavior. Yes. And I would even say his, well, I don't want to, it's deviant. His yeah. deviant behavior, which is harmful, yeah. not just to himself and his spirit. He doesn't know it because he's an unconscious zombie. Yeah. But also to his wife and to his children and even to Natalie. It's unbiblical. It's yeah. unscriptural. It's unchristian. I would say it's anti-Christ, Yes, Eric. it is. But you don't care, do you? You don't care that your wife's pregnant. You don't care that your wife's crying. You don't care that you got two kids. You don't care that you got your whole ass house. You don't care that you have these people over there depending on you. As long as you can get your dick sucked. Oh, yeah. He's driven and blinded by his lust. And he thinks he's living a godly life. Wait until he gets, he wait until he dies. And whatever happens, I don't know what's going to happen. If we show up at the pearly gates or if we reincarnate or whatever, I don't care. You um, pop out of your body into a dimension that is a match for your frequency right now. And if we're talking about Garrick, he's unconscious, animated by his dick. He's going to pop out in a hell dimension. Yeah. He's going to be like, well, where's Jesus? (laughs) Where's all my women? Guess what, bitch? (laughs) Suck it. (laughs) Suck the devil's dick. (laughs) Suck the devil's dick. 
I hate no, him so real. much. He's literally I hate the him worst. so much. And he's manipulated. I think he's manipulated Danielle into believing all of this. Like, I know she's not like blameless, obviously, because she's complicit in this and she's enabling her husband to be a piece of shit and she's raising kids with this dork. Like, I don't. But he's manipulated her into believing that he's seen God and that this is their life. No. I think so. She knows better. I think she's dumb. She's desperate she's to keep her man and she's complicit in his evil doing. Well, and he, she is complicit in what is happening to these children. And she made a choice to bring another child into this world. And I dare say she planned to do so in a desperate attempt to get this loser back to her. And I, think, I don't know. I judge her. I judge her too, for sure. 100%. I'm on this show. But I, I think that she will tell I think people will tell themselves anything to be okay with the current situation that they're in because they don't want to take accountability and ownership for the fact that you can change your fucking life. You can leave this dork. You've already 100%. divorced. Like you're already done. Like I you mean, don't need to be there. Maybe I just don't understand because I've walked away from a lot of toxic relationships and marriages. I've been married one million times. Yeah. Like I am not afraid to say deuces. Bye. You suck. Right. I gotta go and make a new way for myself. Yeah. Um, but uh, so maybe I just don't understand the thinking that would compel somebody unless it's abusive. Like yeah. I understand in an abusive situation right. it's very hard to get out of that. But I'm like looking for that around Danielle. I'm not necessarily seeing it. I'm sniffing some abuse with Garrick when he's drinking and the way that he talks to her through tones. Yeah. I'm sniffing some controlling behavior that is worrisome. But at the same time, Danielle, take some responsibility for your own damn life quit your bitching stop crying this is what you're accepting and so get in the bed and enjoy it lay around in it i agree 100 percent. i had a therapist told me once that when we're used to like toxic situations we just naturally gravitate towards that because it's more comfortable and like being in a healthy relationship or a healthy mm -hmm. partnership or whatever feels weird and that's why most people kind of like go yep. away from that or they go they get in these toxic cycles so like i wonder what Danielle's life was like mm, before. Mm -hmm. I wonder what she comes from because she's obviously with Garrick <laughs> and she chooses to be with this guy right. when she knows, like I think she knows that it's awful. She just is in denial. Like I genuinely, after this episode, I'm like, she is just telling herself whatever she can to stay in this situation because she's too afraid to leave. And she's too afraid to break up her whole family because being in a, a divorcing is terrible and it's, it breaks up whole How families. much is she going to lose by getting rid of that guy? Well, we all She's see still going to have her family. She's still going to have course. a home. She's still going to have her children. They're going to stand by her. But I mean, I think she's motivated by desperation to stay with them. I don't understand it. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that she's afraid. I just think that she doesn't. She's maybe she's afraid to be alone. That's probably. Maybe she does not know who she is because her whole identity is wrapped up in Garrick. She's been with him yep. since he groomed her as a 19 year old youth pastor and she was 15 years old and exactly. they got together from that young age. She doesn't know any better. I, 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 I yes, know. she does. I know. Like we cannot say she does not know anybody. She's a grown ass woman. She has resources. She lives in America. Sure. Yeah. Come on. And everybody She's on the world. She's making this choice. Yeah. Everybody on the internet and everywhere is telling her, Danielle, this is fucked up. Like, why are you with this man? But she's and ignoring that's because it. now we have the spirit of celebrity entering into the mix. Now we have fame because we know that Garrick went out and started his own entertainment LLC a la Cody Brown. Right. The same way that Cody Brown did. And it's interesting because we had a commenter on YouTube last week mention that Garrick has probably been watching Cody Brown and how Cody has organized organized his whole his own life and relationships and businesses and so then Garrick went out got the same kind of LLC so that they could have their own entertainment company so now we have this extra added incentive of being famous getting money through television maybe they have dreams that they'll be the next sister wives and he'll be the next Cody Brown and so it's all fucked up it's all dark it is very dark. But I mean, if he's trying to go down the Cody Brown route, I'm, <laughs> dude, I don't know. It didn't end well for Cody Brown. So maybe Danielle will wise up like mm -hmm. Christine Brown did and be like, OK, I'm done. I'm out of here. Peace out. And maybe what's we'll it going to take, it. though? Like, I what's it going to take? Girl, I don't know. I'm done feeling sorry for her. I'm just getting more and more upset at her. But maybe I'm in the minority. 
I mean, I don't I don't feel sorry for her. I just think she's dumb. But I think she's well, like... Well, she's brainwashed and manipulated. We should feel sorry for her. And I, don't. I don't. Because I think she has agency in this. Well, and yeah. this is how she is exerting it. And you're choosing to ignore literally everybody in the world telling you Including that this your is own bad. family. Exactly. So it's like, <laughs> we can't feel bad for you, but I'm going to call you dumb anyway. <laughs> so she's not going to Rio. No. Nope. He's going to get married, allegedly. I don't yep. know if they actually do get married. The last interesting part that I do want to mention is that Danielle confirms that Garrick is bringing Natalia in on a marriage visa. So yes. not the fiancé visa, because we had discussed before how you can only get two fiancé visas in your lifetime. Mm-hmm. But I think the amount of marriage visas you get, I don't know if it's unlimited, but you can get many more yeah so that is what the plan is to bring her in on a marriage visa probably end up divorcing her so he can bring in the next brazilian woman totally to be the next wife or whatever his plans are but the question remains don't you think the government is watching that there's somebody either in the government who is in immigration and or peripheral to this who is going to see that this is a polygamist system or setup that you're trying to perpetrate yeah which is the biggest red flag if you're trying to bring in somebody on a fiance or a marriage visa like they're gonna see it like is this for real i don't know T- to me i'm like okay you're obviously not bringing her into the country so maybe when he got there he like broke up with Antalya and he's now just fucking a bunch of like prostitutes or something i wouldn't put it past him because he's <laughs> such a sex but his wife gave him permission to go to brazil for a whole month what would a sexual deviant do yeah and I mean, there's a gay scene in uh, Brazil, too. So maybe he's experimenting. I don't know. Oh, God. I'm just saying it's my gay conspiracy yeah. because I hate him so much. I'm just like, <laughs> you're probably just fucking everything and everyone. Yeah, I don't know. Because Danielle's know. allowing it. Well, we will see what happens with them. We'll see if they actually tie the knot. I would be actually surprised if he marries Natalia. That'd be wild. Based on some of the previews that we've seen. But we will be watching. Yeah, we will. And then we have the Davis family, which are boring. AF. When are we going to bring the girl into the hot tub? Who cares? I don't Why care. Why did we bring this family back if this is all they're going to talk about every single week? I told you. Are you okay, Danielle? I'm not okay. Are you okay yet, Danielle? I'm kind of okay. <laughs> all right, what about now, Danielle? <laughs> yeah, I'm okay, but I'm terrified, so I'm not okay again. Yeah. Like, oh, God. Like, they're eating s'mores and talking about dating. I'm like, just get to the dating Please. I just want to see that chick from the preview four episodes ago. Yeah. Who shows up and is like, I'm going to shake up the whole family. I'm going to enter the boom boom room. And Danielle's saying, well, I'm not going to let a toxic <laughs> element enter this family. I want to see that. Okay. With your big eyebrow. Did you see it? Yeah. The eyelashes? Yes. Girl. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. The eyelash. Did I you saw see that big old eyelash? I was like, damn. Blinking at you? I'd be so pissed if the TLC producers let me go on sh- the show like They that. loved it. Oh, of They're course. Like, oh, you look beautiful. They're Perfect. Like, you look great. Don't Perfect, change a Daniel. thing. Yes. <laughs> the one thing that stood out to me with the Davises, I have to be honest with you, what? was the state of their backyard okay because <laughs> they're sitting around this fire the lawn is not mowed there's weeds i saw a dandelion <laughs> there's shit like in the background like pots and stuff like that i'm like nick you don't have a job okay yeah. all you do is stay home in your suit and take care of <laughs> and read. vera yeah. i mean you can't mow the lawn no. like a woman has to get off of her nine to five job which is supporting the lifestyle to which you have become accustomed and she's got to get her ass out there and she's got to mow the lawn I and so. edge it and everything and fertilize it yep come on man i think so i really think that's what he do- what he expects well he's got a good gig he does i don't know how he managed to convince these three ladies like yeah you got to do everything while i stay at home and read and be an intellectual because that's Uh what i offer you and also my dick but like are you cleaning the house are you doing chores like what are you doing to make these women's lives easier or like facilitate their lives make it easier for them because if i'm supporting a whole ass man i'm gonna need you to make sure everything's okay with the kids or whatever but like make sure i'm coming home like it's it's a nice house and stuff because i'm supporting your ass and 
The yard doesn't look like that. I know. It's just like a big, like parts of the yard are just like no grass, yeah. like weeds everywhere. I was he's just not like, doing wow, anything. Nick, come on. He's smoking weed all day. I'm a every Renaissance day. man. Yeah. I'm here to think and ponder and philosophize. And I'll eat your box when, you know, yeah. you're in the orbit of the sun. Yes. AKA me. Let's go to the boom boom <laughs> yeah. room. Oh my God. They're weird, man. And boring. Totally I need boring. them to pick it up. These yeah. Davis Get family members. Yes. And then we have the preview. So April, this was going to be interesting for the Davis family. April talks with her brother about oh, yeah. onboarding a new wife and he's not into it. I guess he doesn't like their lifestyle. He's like, why are you bringing in another woman? That's weird. Shut up. I like, mean, who is he? It's like, not it's working life. for her. I yeah. mean, obviously we're here judging the fuck out of it, but like... <laughs> She's been doing this for a few years uh-huh. now. They've yeah. got a whole child together. It's working right. for her. Who are you, young man, to come I in know. here and whatever? We'll but see what he has to say. it's going to be entertaining for their boring storyline otherwise. Probably not. And then the Shabooties meet with another polygamous Muslim couple. Oh, and, yeah. Which will be interesting. Yeah. We'll see what they have to say. But he called it polygyny something like that what's the difference i don't know uh, i want to know i love words i love to get to the like heart of the words and see what they mean so i'm gonna be looking it up yeah you should look it up i will come back next time and yeah. tell everybody what it means <laughs> yeah and then we have sarah and ashley and shane talking again about their whole dynamic yeah. and sarah's like i don't really want to commit because like i'm not used to that because i'm used to friends with benefits no she doesn't she's say that beatrice she does. she's just like i'm not used to jumping right in that's what she's saying no, but, she no, says but, she's like i'm not ready but like no but she's saying like can we take it slow it's eminently I'm reasonable and shane's completely annoyed because she's not ready to make a full ass commitment to him and to his wife and to their two kids i'm like can you take her on at least two dates can you like spend some time with her so she can get to know you why are we wanting to jump in well it's because you're sick it's because he's got cancer i guess it's because you're sick but you can't put that on somebody else no. a young woman she's 27 years old well and he's acting like again like he's terminal like mm-hmm. I, maybe he is i don't know maybe i'm talking out my ass and i hope mm-hmm. he's not i hope not too i actually like shane i really like him i think he's a good guy so i don't want that for him but i think that's probably what he's thinking like it's well what if i die completely irrational and totally. unreasonable and he's just going to use it as a cudgel He's going to use it as a reason to judge Sarah again, who's 27 years old Uh and who just wants to see who you guys are. It's like the other young woman from last week with the Shibuti. She's just like, I'm here to like have some wine and see who you guys are. And you're judging the fuck out of her. Yeah. Calm down. I know. All these people need to calm calm down. down. Maybe it's because they have like intimacy restrictions. Like all these couples have like contingencies like no intimacy until you're committed like even justin and becky like Mm -hmm. becky tells him before the date with yari she's like no intimacy he's like well can i kiss her though that's because he did engage in intimacy with stephanie and it didn't work out so he gave her the full shibuti yeah (laughs) (laughs) and stephanie left anyway yeah and becky probably gave her the full cookie shibuti yeah and stephanie left anyway so now they're like let's try something different but meanwhile on the date justin's trying to Assault her. <laughs> Accost her. Excuse right. me. Yeah. So maybe that's why everybody wants to jump it so fast. Is that how it works though? I like, don't know. I'm sorry. I'm going to need to spend some time with you for like at least four seasons out of the year. Yeah. To kind of get a sense of who it is that you are. If I can do four seasons and you're still not a psycho, then maybe I'll make a commitment to you. But like asking this young girl to make that commitment on day two, get out of town, Shane. Well, we're, you're wilding. we're in the era of hookup culture. I don't, I can't relate. I've been married for like eight years. I'm out of that. I'm not a hookup person. You've been married for a million years. It's like. Multiple times. Yeah, multiple (laughs) times. And we're not the kinds of people that are like, yeah, let's. Yeah. Bang, let's give up the cookie right away. But. But it's not a hookup he's looking for. He's looking for a wife. Like he's looking for a fully committed partner. And I feel like that's irrational and ridiculous, Shane. Just slow your roll. I feel like all these people want to fuck though. And maybe. Shane's a cuck. Maybe Shane's a cuck. Maybe that's the motivation. I think Shane's scared. I think that's what's going on with <sighs> I don't Shane. Know, and I don't know either. But I'll tell you what. I'm enjoying it. <sighs> Me too. We're on uh, episode eight. We probably got what? 12 to 14 episodes? I think so. And like the last couple seasons, they did have like a tell-all. So maybe we'll have one this season. They that would be tell-all? awesome. Oh, that would be fantastic. Mm-hmm. Do you know that the Valley's getting a reunion? <gasps> really yes and also with vanderpump rules i said they were having i think 20 episodes yeah i think they're actually only doing 
12 or like 14. Oh, good. So Thank I God. think we're actually winding down on that, which Yay. means we as a podcast will be able to pick back up Sister Wives. Yes. Because we do rewinds. Yes. We go back into the archives, honey, back into the history. I know a lot of you have been asking. Yes. We got more DMs on Instagram asking, when are we bringing that back? When are we, bringing we will bring it back. We will. We just have a lot on our raccoon plates. Right now. Right now. So as soon as like VPR or the Valley cycles out, we'll bring in Sister Wives Rewind yes. and we'll be talking about everything that has transpired in the Sister Wives universe since the very unfortunate passing of Garrison. But we'll, we'll yeah. talk about all of we'll that. We'll talk about it. We'll yeah. get everybody back on track. And I do look forward to to that me too any final thoughts on this episode seeking the unexpected <sighs> danielle sucks mm -hmm. garrick sucks i think ashley kind of sucks a little bit i feel bad for shane those yeah are my thoughts those are my thoughts okay yeah i don't have any thoughts <laughs> i'm done with thoughts <laughs> and to that end is there anything else that we need to say to these uh, beautiful raccoons beatrice well if you love our podcast and you love what we do please go onto your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review <laughs> it really helps us grow the <laughs> pod so thank you so much we will be back later this week to talk vanderpump rules and also the valley so make sure you come back and check that out but until then please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you and Peace. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>